The shoulder is an elegant piece of machinery. It has the greatest range of motion of any joint in the body. However, this large range of motion can also lead to shoulder joint problems. Understanding the different parts of the shoulder can help you understand how the shoulder works, how it can be injured, and how challenging recovery can be when the shoulder is injured. The, the bones of the shoulder are the humerus, or the upper arm bone, the scapula, or the shoulder blade, and the clavicle, or the collarbone. The roof of the shoulder is formed by a part of the scapula called the acromion. There are actually four joints that make up the shoulder. The main shoulder joint, called the glenohumeral joint, is formed where the ball of the humerus fits into a shallow socket on the scapula. This shallow socket is called the glenoid. The acromioclavicular, or AC joint, is where the clavicle meets the acromion. The sternoclavicular, or SC joint, supports the connection of the arms and shoulders to the main skeleton on the front of the chest. A false joint is formed where the shoulder blade glides against the rib cage. This joint, called the scapulothoracic joint, is important because it requires that the muscles surrounding the shoulder blade work together to keep the socket properly aligned during shoulder movement. Articular cartilage is the material that covers the ends of the bones of any synovial joint. Articular cartilage is about one quarter of an inch thick in most large weight-bearing joints. It is a bit thinner in joints such as the shoulder, which don't normally support weight. There are several important ligaments in the shoulder. Ligaments are soft tissue structures that connect bones to bones. The joint capsule is a watertight sac that surrounds a joint. In the shoulder, the joint capsule is formed by a group of ligaments that connect the humerus to the glenoid. These ligaments are the main source of stability for the shoulder. They help hold the shoulder in place and keep it from dislocating. Ligaments attach the clavicle to the acromion in the AC joint. Two ligaments connect the clavicle to the scapula by attaching to the coracoid process, a bony knob that sticks out of the scapula in the front of the shoulder. A special type of ligament forms a unique structure inside the shoulder called the labrum. The labrum is attached almost completely around the edge of the glenoid. When viewed in cross-section, the labrum is wedge-shaped. The wedge shape and the way the labrum is attached create an elevated rim around the glenoid socket. This is important because the glenoid socket is so flat and shallow that the ball of the humerus does not fit tightly. The labrum creates a deeper cup for the ball of the humerus to fit into. The labrum is also where the biceps tendon attaches to the glenoid. Tendons are much like ligaments, except that tendons attach muscles to bones. Muscles move the bones by pulling on the tendons. The biceps tendon runs from the biceps muscle across the front of the shoulder to the glenoid. At the very top of the glenoid, the biceps tendon attaches to the bone and actually becomes part of the labrum. This connection can be a source of problems when the biceps tendon is damaged and pulls away from its attachment to the glenoid. Four tendons connect the deepest layer of muscles, the rotator cuff muscles, to the humerus. Just before these muscles attach to the upper end of the humerus, they join together to form a single tendon called the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff muscles lie just outside the shoulder joint. These muscles help raise the arm from the side and rotate the shoulder in many directions. The rotator cuff muscles and tendons also help keep the shoulder joint stable by contracting and holding the humeral head tightly in the glenoid socket as the humerus moves. The large deltoid muscle forms the outer layer of shoulder muscle. The deltoid is the largest, strongest muscle of the shoulder. The deltoid muscle provides the power to lift the arm once the arm is away from the side. 